This video is being sponsored by Ratchet Clothing. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the missing Lucchese $10 million and what they did to try to relocate it. Back in the mid-90s, the Lucchese family was in disarray. Vicar Musso was in prison doing life, and he had handpicked an acting boss. And it was a good friend of his by the name of Joe Defiti. But Joe Defiti was known to be not only greedy, but to be very abusive as well. Scotty Gervasi, a member of our crew, told me about a time when Joe Defiti's car needed to have a flat fixed. At the time, he lived in Howard Beach, and instead of using somebody local, he called up Bubsy, who was in Brooklyn, to come to Howard Beach and to change his tire. And Scotty took a ride with him to help him. Sometime in 1998, Joe Defiti went to prison for extortion, and he was released in or about 2000, 2001. Vicar Musso received word and suspected Joe Defiti of skimming money. And it's a very bad thing to be accused of in that life. And as a result, Joe Defiti was mocked for death. He became suspicious after repeatedly being questioned about this missing money. Suspecting that his life was in danger, Joe Defiti turned to the FBI and began to cooperate. But in his time frame as acting boss, there was a Bensonhurst crew, which was part of the Brooklyn faction. And the captain and acting captain for that crew was Joey Flowers Tangora and Bubsy Costelli. As most of you know, Bubsy is Big John's brother. Two of the members of that crew were Scotty Gervasi, who I mentioned earlier, and Joey DiBenedetto. And Joey DiBenedetto is the son-in-law of Vicar Musso, the Lucchese boss. The crew also had associates, and one of whom was Big John. At the time, John was an associate. They had a social club in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn on 13th Avenue, where they dealt with the usual crimes such as bookmaking, loan shocking, extortion, drug dealing. As we know, drug dealing is against the rules. Nobody really follows those rules. And Big John and Bubsy were always known as nickel and dime drug dealers. And all these guys in the Bensonhurst crew were known as degenerate gamblers. They had a history of borrowing money and not paying anybody back and also beating bookies out of lost bets. So if they won, they would come to collect their money. But if they lost, they wasn't paying you. Joey DiBenedetto told me we were bad. I don't know how we got away with some of the things we did. This was a group of fairly young guys, most of them members of the family, who did not respect the acting boss. And this was mostly because Joe DeFiti had an abusive nature. I remember an old friend of mine, Bobby Colello, telling me a story how one day he walked into a Howard Beach delicatessen named Brothers. And as he walked in, he noticed that Joe DeFiti was in there talking to a woman. He didn't want to walk over and interrupt the conversation just to say hello. But once Joe DeFiti stopped talking to the woman, he walked right over to Bobby and he put his hand to his head and he said, next time you don't walk over and say hello to me, I'll crack your head open. Now remember, this is an acting boss, so he had no humbleness about him. The Bensonhurst crew rubbed shoulders with other prominent Lucchese members like Frankie Bones Papani, an acting consigliere, and Georgie Nexapola, who was a captain in the family. During this period of time, there was a lot of money to be made on the street, and the Bensonhurst crew was a money-making crew. And protocol dictates that a percentage of that money gets kicked up. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of questions that's going to ask what percentage that they have to kick up. Once again, it all depends on what the captain asks them for. So I don't know the answer. Every crew is different because the guy running the crew may do things differently than other captains will. Some captains are bigger ass kisses and want to hand in a larger envelope. But back to the story. As often happens in that life, the guys in the Bensonhurst crew all got jammed up on cases. They would eventually all go away to do time in prison. Once most of them were released and all back on the street, the Lucchese family had transitioned its leadership again. Louis De Don was the acting boss, and Joe Caridi had the consigliere position. Stevie Crea remained as underboss, but the base of power was in Brooklyn at this time. Just as Joe Defiti's sticky fingers were discovered, Louis De Don and Joe Caridi started going over the money that the Lucchese family was pulling in, and it was discovered that somewhere in the neighborhood of $10 million was missing. And the missing money came from the Brooklyn faction, specifically the Bensonhurst crew. The Bensonhurst crew had been broken up with some of his members being transferred to other crews. For instance, Bubsy was put with a Bronx crew and Joey DiBenedetto was put with a Long Island crew headed by Joe Cafe. By this time, the Brooklyn faction had a new captain and that was Johnny Cybrox. 
he had replaced Johnny Badanza, who the administration thought was inadequate for the position. Johnny Badanza is the son-in-law of Danny Catea, who was also a former captain for the Brooklyn faction. So Louis De Don and Joe Caridi wanted to get to the bottom of this missing money, so they assigned Cyburns to investigate. And for the record, not a very good position to be put in because you're investigating friends in that life. So Cyburn said that he went around talking to various guys of the old Bensonhurst crew, asking them if they knew what happened to this money. And naturally, they all denied knowing anything about it. He told me they all bullshitted me. What do you think they did with the money? They gambled most of it and they partied with the rest of it. Ultimately, the money was never recovered and no one was held accountable. Joey DiBettadetto told me right around the time Joe DeFiti flipped, two businessmen approached him and handed him a bag with 250000 in it. They obviously didn't know that DeFiti flipped, so they asked him to give the money to DeFiti. He said he took the bag and put it in his closet and he held it there for about a week or two. And when no one came asking for it, he started to spend it. So as far as money goes, there was a lot of confusion and craziness going on back then. During my time, most of the old members from the Bensonhurst crew were now back in our crew, which was the Brooklyn faction. And when Cyburns was around, they would all joke and talk with him, but they would badmouth him behind his back. They didn't like that he was going around asking questions years ago. And even though they know he was sent to do that, they still blamed him. And he knew how they felt because he said one time, I know they didn't like that I was trying to find out what happened to that money. One day, one of the guys from the old Bensonhurst crew brought the money and sideburns up to me. And he said, it wasn't 10 million, it was a little less. And what did they expect that we did with the money? We spent it. I hope you enjoyed the story. If you did, you could hit the like button and I appreciate everyone who does. I appreciate everyone who subscribed to the channel. And if you haven't, you could do so now. Halloween's next month. So check out Ratchet's new Halloween collection. It'll be down in the description in the link. Okay, till the next time. You can subscribe to the Sit Down News blog at sitdownnews.com, and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed. Thank you. Well, just another example in the mob you never knew about. Hope you enjoyed the story. If you would like to subscribe to this channel, you could do so down below. If you would like to subscribe to my other channel, Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll add a link in the description to this video.